Okay, cool. Over yeah. to Jenny, please. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is a first-time kind of industry-type event for me, so um, it's good to see how relevant I am. Um, uh, thanks, Matt, for inviting me along. So, um, as Matt just introduced me, I am Jenny. I am a design and digital cultures researcher here um, at UTS. I'm based in the Faculty of Social Sciences, but I also work in design studies here. Um, and I have been researching social media for about a decade now. Uh, so those of you who work in social media will know that social media has changed a lot in a decade. Um, what you should know about me is that at my heart, at heart, I am a design scholar. Um, I might actually just time myself there. Uh, I am a design scholar, so um, my research has always located itself around how um, design and social media interact with each other. Um, so I'm looking mostly at the practices that people have with social media, but I'm very much interested in the infrastructures and kind of interaction um, design of social media. Um, so by way of a more kind of casual introduction, um, you know, I don't know much about social media management, but I do know about my own experiences with social media. Um, so what you see here is a, a selection of ad content uh, that has been pushed to me over the last couple of months. Now, I'll, I'll admit to you that this is a slightly curated um, collection, um, but I am putting them together this way for you because I think that they make a pretty good point. Um, apparently, this is a representation of me. Uh, there's currently only one person in this room who knows me a bit more personally, but this is not a representation of me. This does not serve me. It does not engage me. I actually find this quite offensive. It's pretty awful. It's quite body shaming. I'm not into it. Um, and actually, it makes me want to disconnect from social media. Um, so this is a, a really a key driver for me. I might actually just move this guy. Uh, this is a really key driver for me in my research, is really trying to unpack some of these um, uh, you know, problematic aspects of um, surveillance capitalism, because I think it's dumb. Um, now, uh, the thing is, uh, my kind of perception is that surveillance capitalism is here to stay. Uh, where we are being mined for data, and that data is being used to um, uh, push content to us. Um, so I've, I'm coming here to kind of propose a bit of a, a, a challenge to that. Um, I, I first want to talk about um, what kinds of challenges I think we're facing. And this is, I'm more interested in kind of talking about social media as a bigger picture thing. Um, what you see here is just a small select view. I like putting lots of uh, pictures on slides. Um, a small selection of headlines that have um, been published in the last month. Um, and I think what you can see from that, if you're reading any of those, is that increasingly uh, it is becoming apparent that we have big, big, big issues with social. Um, we have bigotry, we have hate speech, fake news, algorithmic bias, deep fakes, discrimination, and more recently in the last couple of days, some pr pretty horrific exploitation um, being driven by algorithms. Um, and I think that these are really very real issues that we need to tackle. Um, as Tim Wu, I'll go a bit academic on you now, Tim Wu notes in his book, The Master Switch, that um, we are losing ourselves to social media. I should be very clear here that while I don't think we should write off social media completely, I think, you know, there's a whole industry here. I think it's, it's valid and important. Um, I, I just want to point out that I don't trust social media. I'm increasingly frustrated by the way that the tools we use are intentionally hiding their inner workings and actively working to remove our own agency from our interactions with them. Um, new technologies do come along. They allow for new social co configurations to emerge, which I think is a really good thing. Um, uh, the internet itself is actually built on a foundation of openness and generativity, and that's, I think, you know, something that we need to maintain um, with the internet and with social platforms. Um, but the thing about technology is that it ends up attracting big business. Um, and the thing about business is it tends to kind of close it down and, and shape particular products to keep it kind of regular and homogenized. Um, and I mean, that's a, a good thing because it's creating an industry. Um, and I'm, there's a few of you in this room, I'm sure, who are part of this industry. Um, but I think that there's a kind of a question there for us, given that we're facing these challenges, um, <coughs> that 
as an industry of social media, we are uh, confronting massive change at the moment. Um, there's a new frontier of regulation and governance happening. Um, things will massively reconfigure in social um, with new governance that is coming in. Um, we can see this battle already taking place with tech giants coming up against um, governing bodies. I think if anyone, I don't know if anyone's seen Macron and uh, Ardern in the Christchurch call um, and the kind of regulation of uh, terrorist content and things like that. It's kind of a weird way of putting it. Um, the marketing and communications industry, I think um, they are, f my perception of it is that they're having to reshape um, their strategies to accommodate kind of micro uh, influences, the, the kind of drive for private um, and also the kind of rise of the ephemeral and the rise of the influencer. Uh, these are big challenges for us. Um, for me, my interest here is in um, the kind of lack of agency that users and consumers have here. Um, and I think that what we will see is a pushback. We're going to see people wanting to really um, shape and kind of have a part in how these platforms um, are engaging us. I'm going way too slow. So instead of um, maybe seeing them as challenges, I want to see them as opportunities um, to do better. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about some of this research that I have been doing, ambiguous academic, hey, academic research. Um, what this research is doing is trying to um, make sense of what is going on um, and also hopefully take a bit of responsibility and ownership over some of these problems that we're facing. So here's my first idea for you. Uh, the social media lover needs to be broken up and completely unblack boxed. Um, it's maybe a bit contentious of an idea, but um, I do think it's maybe a good one. I don't know. Um, what do I mean by this? Well, I think we need to stop kidding ourselves that these harmful aspects of social media um, will just magically go away, um, that it's someone else's problem to sort out. Um, those tech pros in Silicon Valley, I don't actually think they're capable of fixing these massive problems that they've created. Um, let me explain to you what a black box is for those of you who might not actually know what that term is. Um, it's a Latourian term, Bruno Latour, um, and I have uh, borrowed from Wikipedia his uh, explanation of black boxing. So it's the way scientific and technical work is made invisible by its own success. When a machine runs efficiently, when a matter of fact is settled, one needs to focus only on its inputs and outputs and not on its internal complexity. Thus, paradoxically, the more science and technology succeed, the more opaque and obscure they become. So the more that we pat tech pros on the back, the more we lean in, the more um, that the back end processes um, are developed um, to surveil us, um, to push, uh, to kind of pull and push our data um, and to filter the way that we see the world. Um, the more that we do this, the more it is made invisible to users and consumers. Um, and I think we have to stop and ask ourselves, how are we being black boxed? Um, and then more significantly, if we are being black boxed and if we go inside the black box, um, which is something I really want to do, um, what happens next? Um, and I think once we're inside, that's a very scary place to be, but I think we need to, we need to go in there. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we need to engage everyone in the process of black boxing. Um, we're actually, everyone in this room is all stakeholders in this, um, and I think that we all need to be part of this process of unblack boxing. Um, so, uh, where am I? Um, yes, so tech bros, governing bodies, users, social media managers, um, designers, me, we all need to be involved in the process of making visible and intervening in these systems and it needs to be done now. For me, social media is not just a channel, it's a kind of behaviour. You guys talked about that, I think you agree. Um, so in order to understand social media, we need to understand the behaviours that are taking place. Um, so I'm going to go direct to the source to find this out. Uh, in my research, I use a thing called digital ethnography to investigate social media practices. Um, I'm particularly interested in the practices of young adults. So these are individuals who have used social media since they're about 10, 11, 12. Yeah, young, but also now kind of 19, 20, 21. Um, the reason I'm interested in them is because they're actually experts. These um, individuals have been uh, using social media as it has evolved and their practices of use have evolved with it. Um, so they're actually super expert at it. Um, and the other thing about these individuals is that if you ask them about it, they have a lot to say. Uh, so it's good for data collection. 
so how do I how do I actually do this research? What am I doing? How does design fit it into it? How do I bring it together? Well, uh, this semester, so I've um, been uh, writing and coordinating a course in the School of Design um, that is looking at this issue with design students. Um, and over the past 12 weeks of the semester, I've been conducting an experiment with the students. So I've asked each of them to spend a week tracking their own activities on social media, um, researching how and when their personal data was collected uh, and then used by internet platforms to manipulate their engagement. Uh, so effectively, I'm asking them to unblack box their own digital footprint. Um, then once they spent a week tracking their activities, they were directed to spend another week um, pushing back on the system, trying to see if they could provoke some kind of response. Um, and so the, for the majority of these individuals, uh, individuals, and this was slightly surprising to me, uh, they had never thought about examining their own interactions um, more closely. Um, and it was quite amazing, the results. They were pretty incredible. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of um, their data collection. Now, you have to forgive me, they're design students, so they like to visualise things, and these might be a little bit un incomprehensible. Um, what you can see here is two separate projects um, and what they are showing me is how they were able to convince Facebook that they were pregnant um, and they were using voice conversations to do so. So they were um, being very targeted with their voice recordings um, and the way that they were kind of engaging with their phone over the period of a week. Now there's not significant changes necessarily, there's a kind of, if you do a content analysis of this, you can see that they're over the period of two weeks that their content is changing to more kind of uh, content that might be connected to pregnancy in some way. Um, what we see here is a data visualization of um, a student who was trying to make their social media feed more gender neutral. Um, this is uh, this is an interesting example. I don't know if you can necessarily categorize gender in any particular way, but it is a, an experiment. So um, I think she was pretty successful in her work. Um, on the top there, you see her first um, data collection. So she's categorized her data ads that she's um, received and kind of looked at what kind of content um, it is and, and given a category of a longer gender spectrum. Mm, problematic, but interesting. Um, and then in the second, um, you can see that she's successfully able to kind of move into the middle of the um, more gender neutral part, um, part of content. This one's quite interesting, um, <laughs> a little bit maybe unethical. Uh, this student here had never used any dating apps before. Um, so she really decided to engage with dating apps um, and she managed to convince two dudes, one on Tinder, one on Bumble, that they were having a meaningful conversation with her. But actually what she was doing was sending their messages to each other. <laughs> so she was doing some pretty good trolling um, and there was some pretty, once she actually revealed what she was doing, there were some pretty interesting responses. But I think even as a kind of device of trying to understand how people engage, it's quite interesting. I don't recommend you do this in the industry. Uh, this one here, the little side hustle. Uh, this student was very entrepreneurial. Uh, he set up two design portfolio profiles on Instagram. One used a combination of um, organic um, engagement and then paid bots on the other to increase his reach. Um, and unsurprisingly, on his bot um, botted account, he managed to increase his followers and has made about 5K this semester from design commissions. Um, so I'm gonna get some really good student feedback from that one, I think. Um, and then uh, this uh, student here had, was able to um, manipulate Instagram and Facebook to um, push his ad and, co sorry, change his ad content to completely gold. Um, so it's a bit of a, a kind of abstract data visualization, but essentially he was very targeted in what he was looking for, and he was interested to see whether he could change his um, his feed in some way. Um, and he made it gold, so lots of luxury stuff on there. Um, and there are a bunch of other experiments, but I don't have time, so I won't go into them. Um, the result, the insights, what did they, they gain from this? The thing is, uh, I asked them to reflect on that experience. Like, what was that process like? What did they, what was revealed about social media? Um, and apart from an overwhelming sense of shock just around how much they were being tracked, which surprised me uh, that they didn't realize that, 
Um, they're very genuine. They had lots of concerns. Um, they all feel very responsible for their actions. Um, but I have to say, I don't really think it's their fault. I think that that's a really kind of weird kind of emotional thing that we're, we're seeing there. Um, surveillance capitalism was a really big concern um, and they were concerned about the way that the um, platforms were able to manipulate their emotions. Um, they were worried about misuse of data um, and they were really concerned about the fact that context really matters. So, you know, if I go back and think about my leggings, body shaming, ad content, context matters. That doesn't represent me. I think that's really problematic. Um, and they had a whole, there was a whole bunch of different insights in there. Um, they're really, you know, they're, they're kind of all SJW, social, you know, really concerned about the social. Um, you need me to wrap up? Is that what I'm getting? Go fast. Okay. Um, anyway, they have lots of, uh, they have a good sense of what they value. Um, social capital is important. So um, they know that taking away metrics is bad for business, which is reassuring, I imagine. Um, but they also felt they had a good read of the system. They could see through targeted um, clickbaity content um, and they really valued authenticity. Um, and I am going to, you can talk to me a bit more about their, um, what their insights were if you would like. Um, so my kind of final idea is that we really, the kind of thing for me is that we, I think we need to really radically transform um, the, why, the way and the why we design. Now this is not just for designers, I actually think that as I said before, it's about involving everyone, social media managers, um, governors, users, everyone in that process. I think um, design plays a major role in it and I think one of my kind of frustrations as a, a researcher who straddles both design and media and comms and digital cultures is that design is not part of that conversation. And so I'm really actively working to look at engaging with design in there. So um, yeah, that's my, my direction. Now, I have a whole bunch of questions, but I'm going to wrap up and leave you with some um, provocations. Um, should our focus be on untangling ourselves from the seduction of social media? And actually, should we be working more proactively to make some of these systems visible? Should we actually be kind of being a bit more activist and kind of engaging with this more. I would love to hear your thoughts on the social media managers. Um, and then I also think that we need to get down to the nitty gritty. We actually need to start maybe scaling down a bit and starting to think that if data is the new oil, as I keep hearing on Twitter, um, then we need to think carefully about how we both use and really protect this resource because data matters. Um, and that's me. Thank you.